Hello, my name is Russell Gray and I would like to introduce you to the Mesonoic Method. This is a method that I've been using for the last 20 years and developing for 20 years with bands all over the world, brass bands, wind bands, fanfare bands in many different countries. And it's helped me in my career to win over 50 competitions and counting, hopefully, including 14 national titles. And I think it's about time in my career that I wanted to share some secrets. So this is the Mesonoic method. Mesanoia is a made up word. Um, it's based on the Greek word metanoia, which means change of mind. Uh, metanoia is mentioned actually in the New Testament and is often uh, trans transcribed as um, repentance, but it doesn't actually mean guilt or anything like that. It's more in terms of changing direction, to turn around, to think in a new way. So the Mesonoic method is designed to, to be that meaning. It's to, it's to develop a kind of hive mind mentality within your ensemble and to help the conductor and ensemble have a stronger bond between them. So when do you use this? In the brass band culture, the first five to ten minutes of your rehearsal is generally spent playing a hymn tune. And this is okay. It helps people to slow down their thinking and to remember why they're part of a band. But often just playing through a hymn tune isn't quite enough. It doesn't really achieve much. And this is the key to the whole method. It's designed to be used in the first five to ten minutes of your rehearsal. You're actually asking the ensemble to develop ensemble skills during that time. And if you use the Mesonoic method in that time, in conjunction with the 30 hymn tunes that have had specially arranged for this, you will find that the productivity of your rehearsal is quite greatly increased. Your players are going to be more receptive to new information. They're also going to be thinking about where they are in the placement of the ensemble and how they react to each other and how they react to the visual stimulus that's on the music and also the non-verbal gestures that a conductor will be giving them. The book itself is divided into five separate chapters um, so that when you're using it, you can focus in on certain techniques that you want to improve. The first section is a little bit long-winded. Um, it's, it's about balance, sound, intonation, and dynamic control. And then we move on to articulation, different types of articulation. Then we're focusing on rhythm, improving the rhythmic integrity of the ensemble. And then also a chapter on improving focus so that the concentration is increased in the ensemble. And lastly, the things that you can do with the last chord of a hymn tune. We're going to take a look at a couple of examples in the book. Uh, I'm going to show you some of the things and the way that it works. Um, the first example is when you're conducting with, I'm going to presume that you're a right-handed conductor, if you're conducting with your right hand, you would have your left hand with palm up and then conduct through a hymn tune, asking your band to play while your hand palm face up. And then some way through the hymn tune, just turn your palm so that it's facing down and then the band will stop playing but continue to count through the hymn tune and then restart in the correct place when you turn your hand to palm facing up again. Take a look at how this works.
the next example um, is getting the ensemble to be able to change rhythm, um, change from quarter notes or crotchets into eighth notes, quavers, or triplets, or sixteenth notes, semi-quavers, quickly and efficiently. Um, so the way to do this is to ask your ensemble to play the hymn tune, but this time on every beat they must play a quarter note or a crotchet. And with your left hand, you're indicating how many notes you want them to play or articulate within one beat. So this obviously means a quarter note or a crotchet. Eighth notes, triplets, semiquavers, quintuplets. Conducting the hymn tune normally with your left hand, indicating how many notes per beat you would like them to play. Take a look. The third example to take a look at is something to do with the last chord. You just ask the ensemble to play an eighth note or a quaver on your downbeat. So give them a four beat indication and get them to play together on the downbeat. Now continue to beat in four silently and ask your ensemble to play that quaver on the beat that they think you want them to. So you have to practice your active beating and your passive beating. So passive, active, active, active. Take a look at this example. The mesonoic method has been designed to be useful for all wind ensembles, that is, from adult, professional standard brass bands, symphonic wind bands and fanfare bands, to smaller, less experienced community bands, but particularly in developing bands, um, so for example, school bands, wind bands, even down to quartets, quintets. I've used this method with eight-year-old, nine-year-old, ten-year-old, very new players. It's not about the quality of the playing per se, but it's more about how they think and approach their playing and how they integrate with each other as a cohesive unit. So take a look at it and I hope that it helps you unlock other musical pathways um, and will benefit your ensemble and your audience that's listening to you.